Thank you. I call this meeting to order. Confirmation of the agenda that the committee of the adjustment hereby accepts the agenda for April 6, 2021 public meeting as presented. Do I have a mover? I have Paul moving. Do I have a seconder? I have Kevin seconding. I'll hand it over to you, Carson. Thank you. So that'll be a recorded vote. So committee member Sipe. Committee member Falconer. Yes. Committee member Heifer. Yes. Committee member Van Henderson. Yes. Committee member Palmer. Yes. Committee member McBurney. Yes. And chair Bailey. Yes. So that motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Declaration of pecuniary interest. Is there any pecuniary interest tonight? Seeing none, we shall move on. Approval of the previous um, meeting that the committee of the adjustment hereby adopts the minutes from the committee of adjustment hearing held January 11th, 2021 as presented. Do I have a mover? I have Anita Van Hitterson moving. Do I have a second? So, so chair Bailey, if I can, that should just say um, the committee of adjustment um, minutes held April 6th, 2021 was the last one that we should be approving there. Um, so Sorry. if we could just make that amendment to that motion, um, so there is a those are the minutes for approval. Anita, do you, you're, oh, Anita's okay with it. Did I have a seconder? Yeah. Uh, Trevor was the seconder and you're okay with it, Trevor? Thank you. Okay, I'll hand it over to you, Carson. Thank you. So the motion on the floor is that the Committee of Adjustment hereby adopts the minutes from the Committee of Adjustment hearing held April 6, 2021 as presented. So committee member Falconer. Yes. Committee member Heifer. Yes. Committee member Van Hitterson. Yes. Committee member Palmer. Yes. Committee member McBurney. Yes. Committee member Sype. Yes. And chair Bailey. Yes. So that motion carries seven to zero. Statement of president that any decision reached by this committee cannot be used in to set precedents. Scheduled applications file number MV01-2021. And at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Monica. Hey, Bailey. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I missed one there, didn't I? Go ahead, Trevor. Reeve, just wanted to check uh, the, um, I just got a message or I think the group just got a message from uh, the applicant. He's just wondering if he should be able to hear us. I'm thinking he should be. Um, uh, as Carson is, are you uh, looking after that, Carson? Yes, through through you, Chair Bailey, to answer uh, Committee Member Sipe's question, I'm just typing a message to the applicants now. It'll be the audio on their end, um, so I'll just give them some suggestions on how to fix that. Okay, thank you. We're good then. So, Monica, did you want to um, talk to this uh, file? Certainly, thank you very much, Reeve. Um, good evening, everyone. This is an application for minor variance, and I have a presentation that I'll share with you. So I'll just bring that up here. Okay, uh, so this is an application for minor variance. The owners of the property are Rick Steele and Margaret Steele, and they I noticed that they were on the call this evening. Their house is located on the west part of lot 30, concession two in East Wallanosh. The address is 38689 Moncrief Road, and that's in the township. The zoning of the property is general agriculture, and the property is designated agriculture in the township official plan. The property is a farm with an existing house on it, and the house is over 100 years old. Uh, the location of the house is adjacent to the Moncrief Road, and I sh I'll show you a picture in a few minutes. Um, applicant is proposing a porch with a reduced front yard setback. The zoning bylaw requires a setback of 17 meters from the road. This is because uh, sometimes when the snow plow goes by, there can be snow thrown, and when possible, we like to locate 
buildings uh, as far back from the road as possible and 17 meters is our usual required setback. However, the house exists already only 7.5 meters from the road. And as you'll see in one of the pictures that I'm about to bring up, um, just because of the lay of the land in that location, there's a large um, hill. The house is located at the top of the hill and the road cuts a bank adjacent to the house. So um, the, the house is actually protected from uh, uh, plantings of cedar trees on that bank and, and the elevation of the house. So when it comes to the minor variance, um, the minor variance is required in order to reduce the front yard setback, allowing them to build a porch on the front of their house. The minor variance seeks relief from section 4.4 of the North Huron zoning bylaw to reduce the front yard setback from 17 meters to 4.5 meters. So this is a photo from our aerial photography on WebGIS. So as you can see, the existing house locate is located fairly close to the property line. And um, this is what it looks like from where my car was parked on Moncrief Road standing at the bottom of the bank. So as you can see, there's the cedar trees there and the house is located close to the property line, but protected by the steep bank. Um, in reviewing an application for minor variance, there are four tests that come from the Planning Act. Uh, the four tests are, does the application meet the intent of the North Huron official plan? Does it meet the intent of the township's zoning bylaw? Is it desirable for the appropriate development of the lands in question? And is it minor in nature? So when considering these four tests, um, we re refer to the, the official plan, the zoning bylaw, we consider whether this is appropriate development and we consider whether it's minor in nature. In this case, the question may be raised when you're reducing this front yard setback from 17 meters to 4.5 meters. Is that really minor in nature when the setback is being reduced by more than way more than um, half? Uh, the answer is, is that we look at the impact of the variance, not the change in numbers. And if the impact of changing that um, setback is minor, then it is minor in nature. And we consider the reasons for having the setback and whether the reduction in the setback impacts those reasons. Um, so as I've stated, because of this house existing and because it's already protected by the cedar trees and the steep bank, the reduction of the front yard setback is minor in nature. Um, I consulted with the public works department for the township and they had no concerns. And I consulted with the building official and he has no concerns provided that the measurements are accurate and that the 4.5 meter setback is sufficient, he's satisfied. Um, so it would be the planning department's recommendation that this application for minor variance be approved. And I'm available if council uh, or the committee has any questions. Thank you I'll very kind. Thank you very much, Monica. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Now, 6.1.2 opportunity for comment on application by applicant or an and or agent. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this? Not hearing anybody or seeing anything. Uh, 6.1.3 opportunity to comment by others in attendance. Is there anyone in attendance that would like to speak to this? Not hearing or seeing anyone. We're going to move on to 6.1.4. Opportunity for questions, comments by committee of adjustment members. Would any of the uh, council members like to speak to this? Chris Palmer, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Rave, and through you. Um, to the steels, I'm hoping that we can hear them. Um, just asking about stones flying from the grader. Um, that's a that's a concern every year, and there's nothing can can be done about it. But um, have these stones appeared on their lawn at all, or is the cedar grove and the and the um, the, the cliff cliff face stopped it? Uh, can they tell me that? Because I, I don't want us to be liable for um, any more liable than we would be for stones flying. 
Okay, this is uh, Rick Steele. Um, no, we've never had any. It's quite elevated, the house and the and the front yard from the road. We've never had stones um, yeah. come anywhere near the house. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Is there anyone else uh, from the committee would like to ask any questions to Mr. Steele and his wife? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So we're going to move on to um, 6.1.5, summary comments and recommendations of the Huron County Planning Development Department. And Monica, would you like to make a recommendation? Sure thing. Um, I could bring my uh, my presentation up again if you wish, but um, it is my recommendation that the application for minor variance be approved. And in reviewing this application, there were comments from agencies, but there were no comments from members of the public. So my first recommendation would be that the application for minor variance be approved. Okay, on the first one, do I have a mover? I have deputy site moving. I have counselor. So Reed Bailey, Bailey, for that, you'll want to move to agenda item seven uh, first. My apologies. Decision of the Committee of Adjustment for the effects and comments received by the committee's decision that the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves minor variance application MV01-2021 as it applies to 82 Kerr Drive. That's not Kerr Drive though, is it? No, so uh, the motion should be that the Committee of Adjustment hereby approve minor variance application MV02-2021 as it applies to west part of lot 30 concession to east wall and osh ward township of north huron 38689 moncrief road applicant owners rick Steele and rick and margaret Steele, with the conditions set out in the report presented by monica walker bolton planner at the april 19 2021 committee of adjustment hearing thank you do i have a mover I have Paul moving and I have uh, Deputy Reeves site seconding and I'll hand it over to you, Carson. So committee member Heifer. Yes. Committee member Van Hitterson. Yes. Committee member Palmer. Yes. Committee member McBurney. Yes. Committee member Sipe. Yes. Committee member Falconer. Yes. And chair Bailey. Yes. So that motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. We need a second uh, motion, and that'd be a recommendation from you, Monica, on the chart. Monica, you're muted. I, I think this uh, holding the space bars is going to work. I didn't know how to get myself unmuted while I had my presentation on. So. Uh, now I don't know how to um, go to the page that has my. Um, the chart just 1 second. Oh, take your time. You're you're you muted, Monica. I can I can just share my screen here with it. Um if that helps. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't know how to unmute myself and share at the same time. I'm less familiar with this software. Um, Carson's gonna share the chart. Wonderful, thanks Carson. Uh, so this is the chart that shows the effect of public comments on the council's decision or the committee's decision in this case and the effect of agency comments. So starting with the effect of public comments, um, we would use 2A, no public comments were received on this application, so there was no effect on the decision. Uh, and for effective agency comments, um, agency comments were received in support of the application, 
the effect of which resulted in a decision to approve the application. So my recommendation would be 2A and 3B. Thank you very much. Carson, if you can take that screen back down. Thank you. So do I have a mover for 2A and 3B? So move. Uh, Trevor Sipes moves, seconded by Anita Van Hinnersum. Okay, and Carson, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. So your motion on the floor is that for minor variance application MV02-2021, no public comments were received on this application, so there was no effect on the decision, and agency comments were received in support of this application, the effect of which resulted in a decision to approve the application. So committee member Van Hittersom? Committee member Palmer? Yes. Committee member McBurney? Yes. Committee member Sipe? Yes. Committee member Falconer? Yes. Committee member Heifer? Yes. And Chair Bailey? Yes. So that motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Reminder of the appeal period, minor variance procedures following a public meeting. The secretary treasurer sends within 10 days of certification copy of the decision indicating the last day of appealing to the local planning appeal tribunal Two, the applicant the minister of municipal affairs and housing if requested each person who appears in person or by counsel at the hearing or who filed with the secretary treasurer in writing a request for notice of decision if no appeal is lodged after the 20-day objection period has expired and no appeal has been lodged the decision of the committee of adjustment is final and binding the secretary treasurer shall notify the applicant. If a notice of appeal is lodged within the 20, 20 days of the committee of adjustment making decisions, an appeal is lodged with the secretary treasurer outlining the reasons for such an appeal and said appeal is accompanied with a required fee of $400. The committee of adjustment no longer retains jurisdiction over the application. If a proper appeal is lodged, the secretary treasurer is required to provide notice proper notice to the local planning appeal tribunal board adjournment there be no further business uh before the committee of adjustment the public hearing is now adjourned at uh 5 48 p.m do i have a mover i have uh rick mcburney moving and i have paul heifer seconding and i'll hand it over to you carson thank you so committee member palmer yes Committee member McBurney? Yes. Committee member Sipe? Yes. Committee member Falconer? Yes. Committee member Heifer? Yes. Committee member Van Henderson? Yes. And Chair Bailey? Yes. So that motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. So we'll end this meeting now and then at six o'clock we'll, uh, we'll head into the regular council. Thank you kindly.